LJ was practically born running. Growing up on a farm in Maltino, Eastern Cape, training through icy winters and scorching summers is the picture of dedication, and it's paid off. We followed LJ Fonseca's athletic career and personal life with keen interest. A couple of years ago, he needed 10 to 12 hours of rest a day to be a top-notch hurdler. I wonder if anything's changed since becoming a dad. LJ! Hello, <laughs> Good to see you, man. Good to see you again. Wow, fantastic technique. Thank you. Still not perfect, but I'm working hard. <laughs> Hi, how this are you? This is my coach, Edward. Well, nice to meet, nice you. to meet you. LJ, your career demands a lot of rest. How's it changed since becoming a dad? It's changed a lot. It's only one month now, and uh, I feel I can fall asleep now because the baby <laughs> has to get his feelings every three hours at night, and it's difficult to train without uh, as many sleep as I'm used to. You ran your first race at the Diamond League being a dad. How did that feel? Louis was born on the Monday and the Tuesday evening. I had to go from the hospital to the airport. I had to fly for the Grand Prix final in Brussels. It was so difficult for me to leave the country and uh, perform there and to stay focused, you know. And the baby is, is, is still at home and one or two days old. But uh, I was so proud. I did the last competition for him as a dad. It seems like the little man had quite a positive influence on your season. Yes, I had a very consistent year. I qualified 12 times for the Olympic Games. That's going to be next year. I got three second places on the Diamond Leagues. I was in the semi-final in the Beijing World Champs, so I'm very satisfied. Coach, do you think that LJ's kid has had a positive impact on his performance? Yes, I think definitely, yeah. He's got a purpose in life now to, to run for his son and, and to show his son that he's going to do it again at the Olympics next year for him, yes. In our last interview with LJ, the ever-competitive Simba figured that although he'd been away from athletics since studying, with a little coaching, he was still enough of a track ace to give this Olympic hurdler a run for his money. Simba the one raced you on this track. I want to try my luck today. Yes, yeah, Simba raced me about three years ago on this track. And I think you've got a better chance without the hurdles than with the hurdles because Simba <laughs> did actually very well with the hurdles, but he still couldn't beat me. I'm gonna need it. Yes, let's do it. <laughs> Our presenters certainly talk a good race. Ever heard of the flash? I'm him. Rules, no false starts, second whistle you go. Make the base one win. Let's do it. Chris figured that because LJ took his first International Junior World Champs gold medal 14 years ago, he might have slowed since then, but no. I'm not as fast as I thought I was. Congratulations. Thank you, you've got fast feet. I think you missed your calling. You hear that, guys? Well, I'm looking forward to seeing your kid now, actually. Let's run and see if I can beat you there. Yes. Mr. Fonsale couldn't have found a better woman to be his Mrs. Fonsale than South African long-distance runner Yvette van Blerk. They were married soon after the London Olympic Games in 2012. And whilst her plans were very much to join her husband as a competitor in Rio 2016, falling pregnant did complicate that a bit. Hello, little Louis. This is little Louis. This is little Louis. This is little Louis. Oh, Louis Akko is fun sale. Louis is so cute. You want to hold him? Please, thank you. Oh, oh, baby. Hello, mm -hmm. little guy. How did you decide on his name? We gave him my family name, Louis Jacobus van Seil. He was born on the 7th of September and he weighed 2.75 kgs. This is a really cute setup here. Did both of you contribute to the interior design of the room? LJ was away competing, so I did the room on my own while he was away and my friend helped me with the cot and the dresser to paint it. And yeah, the rest of the teddies, um, we got to LJ every race he did overseas. He bought a teddy from the country he was in. So yeah, I think the room is quite both of us. What are some of the sentimental pieces in this room? Right behind you, Chris, there's a truck Louis' grandfather gave him. And it's the same truck that he used to play when he was so young. And LJ also got a few t-shirts and mascots from countries he competed this year. This is the New Yorker Yankees. Nice t-shirt for little Louis that he can put his head with. <laughs> okay, LJ doesn't look that good in it. You have two big heads. And uh, Man United in the back. He's uh, got a Man United vest as well. When he's a little bit older, he can be a fan. I'm sure little Louis has turned your world upside down. What are some of the adjustments you've had to make? Little sleep and to change nappies and to learn how to bath him. But Alja has caught on and he's also changing nappies and feeding him, so we're doing well so far. So far so good, but late sleep is catching up with me now. The last time we featured LJ, he insisted that the Bornsmara cattle he farms in Maltino are his children. 
things have changed since then, and just as well. Because capturing the newborn hoof prints of a Bonsmara calf is a lot trickier than it is with young Louis here. I felt like a kid again, did you? Yes, this is so cute. <laughs> this stuff feels so nice in your hand. Before a vet even knew whether her child was to be a boy or girl, the scan showed her baby had very big feet. So perhaps Louis is destined to become the next Chad Leclerc. One thing is for certain, as the son of a farmer, he'll have a tractor to play on. And until then, his dad can bring him here to Cedar Junction to ride these fantastic model trains. LJ, I know you and I have been dying to get onto one of these. I bet you're gonna join. Not today, um, it's a little bit hot outside. Me and Louis are gonna see how you guys do it. Well, boys will be boys. LJ, let's do this. LJ is mad for off-road bikes, though this looked a good deal safer for an athlete who always has to watch out for injuries. One reason he prefers non-team sports. A vet is the SA champion in the 10-kilometer and half marathon. And while she runs as a profession, she also finds that she needs to run. It was part of how she coped with the physical changes of pregnancy. Whoa, sweets! <laughs> I feel like I'm about to unleash my inner child. If this is what his one month celebration is like, please invite me to his year birthday. So when Louis was born, it must have been extremely magical. Can you tell me about the day? Yes, it was a very emotional experience. I didn't cry, but uh, the experience, uh, it meant more to me than all the medals I've won, all the races I've won. This little boy, it was just an amazing day in my life. Yvette, you're an athlete yourself. Apparently you trained until the day you gave birth. Yeah, a week before I gave birth, I was still running with my gynecologist. We were running a 5K. So I was really staying fit and healthy throughout the pregnancy. I think that helped me to stay sane and not kill LJ. <laughs> so, but yeah, I really enjoyed running pregnant. It was tougher than I thought, but it was... Um, and he didn't like it at all. Little Louis <laughs> kicked and screamed in my stomach, I think, like crazy, because every time when I ran, he was the most active uh, out of the whole day. Then he would relax if I just stopped running. So I think now he's, that's why I sleep so much, because he's tired of running and <laughs> being active. <laughs> so tell me, what are the plans for your careers for the future? I started preparing for the Olympic Games, that is next year, August, and I started lecturing at the University of Pretoria and I hope I can complete my masters in the next year. I'm going to also try and qualify for the Olympic Games after being pregnant almost a year. It's been quite tough on the body, so um, like not exercising like I should have. And after that, I would love to be in education, be at the school that my son is at and can see what's happening and not that he can be too naughty like LJ. <laughs> I wasn't naughty. What are your dreams for Louis' future? This is what he enjoys, that will be good enough for us and that he just be a healthy little boy and grow up to be like his dad. We don't expect him to run <laughs> Olympic athletes or break SA records, just a normal kid is fine for us. What a fantastic day, truly inspirational and thank you for allowing me to be a part of it. To LJ and Yvette, congratulations on Louis qualifying for Rio and here's to finishing in the medals.